Hey everyone, Hope, hoping everyone is uh, well and has had a fantastic weekend. Okay, I see you've all been on here for a little while chatting about the weather. <laughs> I see this. Uh, lazy day reading, that sounds good, Jean. Yeah, I think it is, yeah, it's not a whole day. It's certainly tomorrow where we are. <laughs> um, although, what time is it there in Oregon? Hi there, Cindy. Nice to see you from Chandler, Arizona. There we go. 2.20 a.m. There you go. What time is it in Australia? It's just gone 7.32. was well, 7.30, just after 7.30. Hey, everyone. No, no. Friday night was the night I was late, Jean. Um, the, I, I scheduled it for 8 o'clock instead of, um, although sometimes... Um, it's this weekend is the weekend I had to take my son. Um, I we I meet his father who lives several hours north of here. I meet his father about just over an hour's drive away from here. So we do the drop off on a Friday night. So Ben gets home from school. We get him all packed up and everything ready to go. We run out the door. We get him up there, and then I come home again in time for my life. But. Um, on Friday night it was going to be a little bit close and I didn't want to push it so I scheduled it for 8 o'clock instead of 7.30 so half an hour later but interestingly a lot more people and not more new people watch me on Friday night and I'm wondering if the time suited them better or whether it was just a fluke. Um, tonight I'm back to 7.30 again so I guess we'll see um, although I had to go pick up Ben but didn't have to pick him up as late I was pick, picking, picking him up a little bit earlier today so it gave me a bit more time to get home. Oh, well, very glad that you love watching the videos, Cindy. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, I hope you're going to learn something tonight too because we're going to do something again by request. So I love these requests coming in, guys. Keep them coming. Um, not only does it give me um, a direction to go in and uh, something to focus on, but it also reminds me of techniques that I maybe haven't used for a long time myself and it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> um, so we've got one of those tonight. Just going to go through and see if I've missed any other comments. Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. How's the weather in Sydney? Today was not too bad. It was overcast but not raining. And yesterday was beautiful. It was lovely. <laughs> um, Sydney is about an hour and a half north, uh, uh, an hour and a half south of where I am. I'm up the coast a little bit from there. Um, it's beautiful in this area. But we have very similar weather to Sydney. Maybe a degree or two different, but otherwise the same. Uh, da, da, da. Yes, a couple of days of sunshine. That sounds good, Margaret, doesn't it? Um, yeah, crazy weather lately. Hey there, Judy. Hi, Jody. Judy, Jody. We have lots of J people. Jean, <laughs> Jenny, um, and everybody. Nice to see you all. I'm sorry I don't say hello individually to everyone, but it would take me too long and then we'd all get bored, including me, but you guys especially. So, hey, Inika, how are you going? Hi from the Netherlands. Hi, Sandra. We've got good, got a good crowd here. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, switch over in just a moment. I've got a couple of things to show you tonight. I've got my cutting because I'm the nights that I'm not 100% sure, like I, I know roughly what direction I'm moving in but not completely. So, um, so yeah, that gives me something to move on, right? So, all right. Let's have a little play. Oh, thanks, Jody. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Um, thanks to those people, my online class went live last night. Thanks to those who've already purchased the tutorial or ordered to receive the supplies. Um, all the explanations, I'm going to quickly put my blog address up because if you wanted an explanation of how it works, here is the blog address for you so that um, you know where to go to see all the full details. And there's also for people buying just the tutorial, there's a PayPal button there. Um, normally I charge $20 Australian dollars, which is uh, I think around $15, $16 US. Um, this month I decided because I, it's a new catalog month and I want as many people as possible to get the tutorial. So I've dropped the price. I've gone down to 15 Australian dollars, which is probably a bit more, maybe about $11 US or something like that. So um, that might give people a bit of an idea how it goes. Um, just having a look to see if I've missed anything. If I've missed any questions, my apologies. Ask me again, please. Um, so you can see the blog address is there on the screen just under my chin. 
Um, the idea being that if you wanted to find out more about the class, whether you wanted to just pay the, for the tutorial for, for $15 or whether you want to actually uh, place an order and get the supplies as well. You need to be in Australia though to get the supplies as well. So, um, but we do have, I do have quite a few people over in the US and other, other parts of the world ordering the tutorial because I send that to you via email. So that's quite doable. So there you go. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Judy. And thank you, Jody. You guys, I'll have to slip you some money later, right? <laughs> Saying all those nice things. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So Elizabeth, if she's here, where is Elizabeth? Is she here tonight? Pop your head up. Pop your hand up. Say hi, Elizabeth, if you're here. Um, Elizabeth asked me on Friday if I would be able to um, do something with the soft pastels because we have the soft pastels assortment. Um, let me just tell you what page they're on, although Megan's usually the, the um, super duper fast person when it comes to working out where things are. She's always much quicker than me. <laughs> She's become my... Here it is. They're on page 126. Hi, hey, Elizabeth. Nice to see you. We're going to do the soft pastels by request. Now, I'm not going to do everything you can do with soft pastels. There's just too many things and it would take us forever and ever and ever. I might do a couple of separate videos about them if anyone's interested in those. But um, I also thought I would give away a pack of the soft a soft pastel assortment, but I'm going to do that on my VIP group. So if you are interested in um, in possibly winning a pack of soft pastels then um, head over to um, my vip group if you're already a member just go over um, you'll already be entered in the draw um, but I, i'm going to i'm going to have a like i'll pop up a little a little live or something in there to tell you exactly what you need to do um, but it'll only be for people in the vip group your paypal's not working properly can you pay another way um yes i'm sure we can work out something margaret um maybe send me a message and we'll work something out for you okay Ah, uh, right, 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 right. Well, if you if you love cats, Susan, you've come to the right place because everybody here, I think, knows my resident cats. We have two. We have a big black and white boy. He's about eight and a half kilos of cat. He's huge. Um, and he, for anyone, some people say, oh, is he a Maine Coon? No, he's not. He's just a domestic cat, but he's a really big cat. He's not actually fat. He's really chunky. He's very muscly and strong as well. So I'm not quite sure how that happened. But anyway, he is. I'll take my name down. All right, but you know, it's only me. You're not missing anything. <laughs> I'll take it down though, all the same. Hide current comment. There you go. It's gone. Um, and then we have a little ginger cat that is a complete, um, what would we call him? A rascal? I don't know. <laughs> Who was in my photo today? My photo today was Merlo. He's the big, he's the big boy. Okay, so like I said, he's about eight and a half kilos at the moment. He goes between seven and a half and eight and a half, depending on how much of Crumpet's food he's been eating. He's very food focused. He will eat anything if he can get his mouth around it. So there you go. And your ragdoll is six kilos. See, that's a nice big cat as well. But Merlo has him beat. But he's the gentlest of cats. He's so gentle with Crumpet. Mind you, every now and then Crumpet pushes his buttons and, and, you know, chews on his tail once too many times and Mella takes a swipe at him and he regrets it. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. So we got those two um, and they're best friends most of the time. So it's pretty cute. All right. So um, let me get this um, stuff turned around and we'll have a look at these soft pastels and I'm going to give you a couple of tips about using them a couple of different ways. Naughty Torty, yes. Well, we have a Naughty Ginger. <laughs> And, yeah, they, they steal your heart, that's for sure. We got Crumpet from the pound when he was just uh, about six weeks old, eight weeks uh, eight weeks old maybe. Yeah, not even. He was closer to six weeks. Yeah, and he used to feed off Merlo. Now, Merlo is a boy. Crumpet still managed to get some comfort from that, but I don't think it did much else for him. And Merlo let him do it. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? Goodness me. Okay, dish up dinner and we'll just get slowly started. Okay, well, you won't miss too much, Megan. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's switch over. Oh, I need to properly put my phone. It's not going to help if I've got it here on my desk. So let me get that in the holder. Normally I do this before we start. And tonight um, I wanted to not be too late. So I thought, oh, I'll do it after we start. And then I forgot. <laughs> so um, let me just go into Safari on my phone because that's the only way I can access it. One second, guys. 
and I'll paste and then we go in so what happens is then I enter the stream and I can switch over from one camera to the other which is pretty cool the program I used is called StreamYard it's very helpful um, and I'm going to turn off the sound on my computer in a second so you'll have to give me a second because I'll need to do that quickly okay Linda's desk that's what I'm typing Linda's desk and I need to use the back camera not the front camera I'm getting better at this but I'll tell you it's I normally have like I said I normally have this done before we start and tonight I'm a bit there we go right put it into the holder and away we go you're getting some of the behind the scenes stuff here <laughs> it's not very interesting is it there we go I think that's right now all right now we should be able to switch that on oh have to enter the stream that's what I have to do enter now oh, now we need to get rid of the echo all these things I normally do. You should be able to hear me now. I'm so sorry. I didn't add it. Didn't add it in. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Okay. Tell me it's all right, guys. We're getting the behind the scenes. Yay. <laughs> thank you good I'm sorry that was a little that was a little trip behind the scenes probably not particularly professional but hey that's that's how I roll sometimes so I was thinking oh yeah I'll just add the camera in afterwards that was a mistake I should have done it before I started even if I was a couple of minutes late <laughs> airplane mode yes I put it on do not disturb so that's the same thing Jenny yep remember that so there's all these things to remember right and you guys um I know every, I'm just so glad that you're all so patient with me. So I'm very grateful for that. All right. Yes, sound. Hooray. <laughs> okay. All good. All right. So now you should be able to see my desk. This is page 126 in the catalog. And here we have our soft pastels. Can you see those? I'll just pull them up so you can see them a little closer. There they are. There's other fun things we've got for colouring. Lots and lots of colouring things like the watercolour pencils, which I love. There's two different assortments of those. But the pastels, there's just the one assortment. And I have them. Now, this is the one I'm going to give away. I'm going to give one away, on, like I said, on my VIP page. You can see it's still got the plastic on it. It's brand new. All right. But then I've actually got one here that I've opened and used a little bit. Now, to be honest, I haven't used these nearly as much as I should have. Um, I wish I had used them a lot more because I actually really like them. In For anyone who knows, if you've ever been to my house, I actually, once upon a time, I did a, many, many years ago when I was in my late 20s, I did a fine arts certificate at TAFE and um, my, pastels were my thing. I really, really love them. I love working with them. I've done lots of still lifes with them and that sort of thing. I've got a lovely big... Um, framed picture in my kitchen of a coffee a coffee pot like an old Italian coffee pot with um with some bits and pieces in it and I did that in soft pastels so I've been using soft pastels for a long long time 
Now, when you use soft pastels, before you even start, um, there's a couple of things to consider. First of all, let's think about the colours that are in here. These colours do match up with Stampin' Up! colours, okay? Hey, Lorraine, nice to see you. Um, and it tells me here what the colours are. Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, and Poppy Parade, okay? So it's got a good assortment of colours. Um, I've just thrown them back in anywhere, but I probably, I don't know, if I was very pedantic, I probably should have put them in, in the order that they appear on the back here, but I know which one is which. I noticed that the Mango Melody, which is this one here, is it looks really similar in the, the pack to the Daffodil Delight, but when you use them, you can see the difference. Um, this is Poppy Parade. This is Gorgeous Grape. It almost looks, reminds me of Elegant Eggplant in the, in the pencil form and they're quite they're quite weighty so they're basically chalks okay pastels are basically chalks or soft pastels are um there's also you know i there's also there's oil pastels there's different types of pastels that you can get we don't have oil pastels here oil pastels will give you a result more like more like oil crayons really um and these are coastal coastal cabana which also it's a beautiful color this this is really nice so what i like about the soft pastels is that when you use them they're very concentrated pigment okay so um when you use them you get really really strong color if that's what you want although there are ways to use them lightly as well the granny apple green is another really great this this here this is night of navy believe it or not doesn't look like night of navy does it it looks more like pacific point but it's a beautiful color it's a beautiful blue so anyway this is the colors, right? So you can get a really good assortment. This is a good assortment for doing lots of different things, okay? So the next thing you need to think about, let's put our catalog away. The next thing you need to think about when you're using soft pastels is the paper that you're using. Because ideally, pastels work best when you're using um, paper with, the word is, the technical word, the arty word for it is key, okay? So key means... Um, it's a texture that allows your colour to sit on it rather than smooth or flat, which doesn't doesn't give you doesn't allow as much pigment to be released. So, if for example, I use let me just grab a piece of I'm just thinking, do I have some good old Whisper White? I do have some just here. Let me grab some. So this is just sorry, not Whisper White these days. I've got to get used to not saying Whisper White, but because I said Whisper White for 15 years, um, I'm still not <laughs> still got the hang of calling it basic white instead of whisper white. So every now and then I fall back and call it the wrong thing. Hey there, Sunny, nice to see you. Okay, they are a great medium, just Susan. They're really fun. Oh, someone at the door. Okay, off you go. We'll still be here when you get back. All right, so just say I decide I'm going to use, I don't know, I'm going to pick this color because it's probably one of my favorite colors, all right? There's a several different ways you can use it. This is just on basic white and it's quite smooth, okay? So if I was to use the corner, the edge of the pastels, I'm going to get a lot of pigment coming off here and you can see the color is quite intense. And every now and then you might to get, need to because it releases a lot of powder, so you want to just sort of blow the powder away, okay? Now that's just on very, very smooth paper. If I didn't want it to be so concentrated, then I could use the flat side rather than the end. And you can see straight away, it's different because we use the hard end of the pastel here to get the, the extra color and just the soft edge, the soft side here to get a lighter color. Number of things you can do once you've actually done them is you can blend them. You can blend them with your finger. You can blend them with a blending brush or a, um, what do you call them, uh, blender pens. Um, in fact, blender pens are quite nice for them. Just make sure that one's actually got some. So you can actually blend them and it will start to even out the colour. And you can see we can no longer see the strokes that we used at the start. It's sort of much more smooth. All right Now this is just on smooth paper, all right? So there's no key, it's just smooth. All right, can you see on, with the extra how it's really concentrated there all right so just a couple of examples of how it might go on smooth paper so in order to have something with more key we have our watercolor paper now watercolor paper is very similar to some of you may know of Canson paper which is a brand of art paper that is used for pastels and different different types of medium um, 
but pastels work really well on watercolor paper because it has key and when i say key i mean it's not completely smooth it's got like little ridges in paper okay so when i use it on that immediately it becomes a bit more interesting because we've got the key of the paper or the texture of the paper and you can see we get a different see how it's smooth on here and it's not smooth here can you see what i'm talking about oh let me bring that down can everyone see what i mean all right so you're going to get a different result straight away okay now as far as blending it like i said you can use a blend pen you can use you can add water and and add a water water painter which will give you more of a water colored look you can even use your finger so just say i want i had two colors say i've got i've got daffodil delight and coastal cabana which are two colors that always look good together and then we can blend that with our finger if we want to and it actually comes up quite nice okay so there are so many different ways you can blend you can use sponge daubers to blend you can use um you can even do a second sheet of paper so just say i'll let me grab another piece of paper okay so just say i have these two colors let me put this one here and i want to blend them together i can even i can even use another piece of paper to blend and something i used to do which actually gives you quite a good result um something i used to do once upon a time was and you can do this with um, pencils as well so a lot of these things we do with pastels you could also do with with pencils you can put it onto a second sheet of paper and then use this one so actually it's not coming up as much because i haven't added very much but i can start to transfer the paper and can you see it gives me a quite a nice soft result there okay yeah you can use so many different things so basically any of your coloring tools or anything you use uh, at all to color with other mediums you can use with your pastels now this is just using white paper okay i'm going to just show you how this would look to if i blend over it on the color the watercolor paper that smooths out the result you know how like it gave me a textured look before if you want it to be smoother you can go over it with a with a past with a blender pen and that will actually smooth out that result so you can get different looks there all right now something else i love to do like i said i'm not going to do every technique there is tonight but something i really love to do is i like to do it on black okay so just some black cardstock because the colors stand out really well on a dark background so look good on navy or look good on uh, blackberry bliss whatever you wanted so you can see that we can color in quite beautifully here and we can blend that in with our finger if we want to or whatever tool we want to use and you can see it stands out really nicely on the black yeah well the, guess what i'm going to do next susan i've got a piece here that i embossed so you're stealing my thunder honey <laughs> hi heather nice to see you the shimmer white well, absolutely works yes it does okay but what i thought i would do is let's actually do a little bit of coloring and we're going to do it with a bit of embossing so on the black we can do a number of things we can use shiny um like silver or gold which always looks good on black out of interest what is the most common block sizes people use um michelle the answer to your question in my experience is d sorry c d and e those middle ones okay c d is probably the middle one is the most common of all okay that's d you can see how big it is on my hand right this size about the size of palm of my hand there you go about that size so it's a good all-round size I'll come back to the other stuff with it you can blend with wingastella megan absolutely you can okay and then the next size up from that is e oh i don't think i have an e here in front of me because i was using them over at my other desk so i can't show you that one i don't believe maybe i can maybe i can't i've always got i've got several d's i've got two e's and a couple of c's in my collection but i have i think four d's because that's the one i use the most <laughs> don't be sorry susan that's fine i was just joking <laughs> um so yeah i'm just looking to see if i have any c's and well there's a there's an e that's, that was handy enough to grab all right so that's the next size up all right so there are a lot of stamps will fit on a d nearly everything will fit on the a, 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 um an e 
Okay, now if you have a super big stamp, like today I used a big stamp. Let me show you. Um, I used a new background stamp today to make this card. Okay, so I love a sunburst. Love, love, love sunbursts. I don't know what it is about them. I just always love them. And we've got a new one. I was like, yep, I'll have that. Thanks. So this is it, Ray of Light. Um, really fun. But the only issue is that you need a really, really big block to go on to go with this stamp i'm sorry we've just hijacked the conversation but that's okay i will come back <laughs> that's all right it's okay um so this one here only fits on block f okay now a lot of people don't have block f that's this one really really big one okay so you can see it's going to fit this stamp because they're designed to fit this background size stamp however if you don't have one of these but you do have a Stamparatus, then use your Stamparatus to do this. You don't, the only time you really need an F is for these big background stamps. And if you have a Stamparatus, you'll never need F. Okay, you can just use the Stamparatus plate instead. So, so there you go. Okay. Um, all right, let's just pop that away. And I just thought it'd be fun to show you that. All right, does that answer your question? Yes, the blocks that come in the kits are D. You are correct, Megan. That is right. So D is sort of the all-round size. And then I do occasionally use, like, for example, you know, the new Cottage Rose set that does that. This one with this big flower here, that is too big to go on D. That needs to go on E. So if you have it, one big stamp like that in your set, you're going to need one bigger block. But um, those, those are the three I recommend as a general rule. All right, pop those away. All right, so um, what I thought I'd do first, well, let's, let's seeing as Susan's let the cat out of the bag, pardon the pun, um, let's, um, let's do this first. So this is another option for you. You can also, with an embossing folder, because it's got that texture, it's going to pick up the texture and the ridges of the embossing folder. So um, if I wanted, for example, I'm deciding what colour to use here. I wanted to create a, a look to these bricks so I can sort of just put it down on its side and go over the top. Now, this is the Daffodil Delight. Oh, no, this is the Mango Melody. And go over the bricks really, 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 really gently. Okay, you can see it picks up the pattern, all right, and you can see it really, really easy. Now, this is, this is Daffodil Delight, so let's add some of that. And then maybe some... Yeah, let's try some mossy meadow. So you can kind of start to build up some color, some different colors that might look kind of cool. I don't know. Do we try red? Do we try? Let's just try some red. It's going to end up looking like my parent, uh, like a red brick house. <laughs> But you can see it's really cool because now we've got lots of colours going on there. Can you see that? And it it really it almost really does look like, I think, like real bricks almost. Don't you think that's cool? Yeah, that's okay, Michelle. I do I usually if my stamparatus is in um in reach, I also favour the stamparatus. That's correct. Oh, that's a good idea. Good idea, me. Um, Jean, you're saying uh, Jean's saying she uses the biggest block for college collage pieces. So, yep, that's true. You can do that. You, I know it's like a graffiti look. Isn't that cool? And then I can use this as a background for another card and do all kinds of fun things with it. So I just think that's really, really fun. And we've got some pretty patterns left here on the page. I really like how that turned out. That's really fun. Um, yes and no. Um. Yes, if I run my fingers over, it will. There's a couple of things you can do. Okay, so you can see I've got some here on my fingers now. Um, it's not bad, but what you can do is if you have, you can purchase at any art store, you can purchase um, fixative in a spray can, like spray fixative, and uh, Spotlight should have it as well in their, in their arts and paint section. Um, but if you spray over it um, with that fixative, it won't go anywhere. It's the same with pastel um, paintings, you know. Like if you rub at them, yes, they're go it's going to come off. But um, first of all, that's why you put them under glass. And the second thing is if you can spray them with a fixative, it's it's going much less likely to move. So that's an option for you. Um, 
the other thing is with use, like I did a few of these. I did some, um, you remember the Peru the Parisian um, embossing folder that has only just retired? I did that on black and put this over the top, the Coastal Cabana over the top. And that, there you go. Yeah, that's another idea, Angie. She says that if you wipe the cardstock with a baby wipe, the chalk spreads easier. Look, there's lots of tips for these, isn't there? And hairspray is good for setting chalks. Thanks, Denise. I've always just used fixative, but you're probably right. I never thought to use hairs hairspray. It's a great idea. A Windsor fixative, says Jean. That's what she used, and some people use hairspray. There you go. <laughs> and 3M do a spray, says Donna. All right. So there's a few. This is this is a question that people always say, will it come off? Um, when I did the this uh, Coastal Cabana over the... Um, of the black Parisian flourish folder, um, I just put a piece of tissue paper over it for them to transport it home because I was worried it would come up in their bags and some did go onto the tissue paper and they said after that it was fine. So a lot of it will come off anyway just, just by moving it around. But I do like how that looks. I might have to make a card with that now. Okay. It's always something to make. All right, so I'm going to pop these back in. So the colours I used to get that effect, we used a bit of Daffodil Delight, we used Mango Melody, we used the Poppy Parade, and then I also used some of the Mossy Meadow, especially down here in this section. So it turned out really pretty. I'm really happy with that. And isn't it nice? Some of the bricks look like they're um, 3D, like some of them are really come out more than others. So it's a really good look. Ah, oh, there you go, Rose. See, Rose is using hairspray as well. I learned something because I had never thought to use hairspray. <laughs> All right. All right. So what I was saying before is let's try doing this with um, with a stamp. And I'm going to use D-Block, Michelle, which is the right size for the biggest stamp in the Happiness Abound set. Um so the Happiness Abounds is part of the Hues of Happiness suite and that is what I'm using this for this month's class, okay? So, yeah, I think if you use a blender pen and water, you don't need to. That's a good question, Megan, but I think not. Um, if it dries, I wonder if it's still going to be powdery. Yeah, I might need to test that theory out because I am not 100% sure. If anyone knows the answer, feel free to answer, but I'm not quite sure. All right, so I'm pulling out my Versamark. Now, I could also use white ink for this. Um, both work really well. And I'm going to pop a mat underneath because it's going to stamp better on a mat. And so let's... So it'll look like not much is happening. But I thought this would be kind of nice to do. Now that I've done that, I'm wondering if I... Yeah, I think I might do it. I think I might do it landscape. <laughs> Now that I've started, I'm just going to use the one stamp, like the same stamp several times. All right, so we've got one, two, and three, and I think I'll just add part of another one up here in the corner. That looks good. And will we add, yeah, I think we will. We'll add a, a couple of leaves and pop those on. This is B block, this one. So I'm just going to add some leaves down here in the front and maybe some coming over the edge in the corner here and here. All right, I'm happy with that. Now I know it doesn't look very exciting. If you turn it in the light, you might almost be able to see the design. No, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, well. But when we put the embossing powder on, we can see it, right? You've all seen me do this before. Embossing is still one of my favourite techniques. It's always good. And it's a wow. We like things that are going to give us uh, a wow factor. So you can see my pattern, my design that I stamped is now coming out. Because the, for anyone who doesn't know, the, um, the embossing powder sticks to the Versamark because the Versamark is clear and sticky. So it leaves behind a sticky image for the powder to stick to. Oh, here we go, I missed a bit. All right. Now 
let me just pour this back in got a couple of dimensional backs in my embossing powder how do they get everywhere these things right <laughs> end up with them all over the house look here's another one not sure how it got there but anyway oh there's another one gosh did I totally maybe I put them in there and thought it was the bin I don't know all right let's pour this back so we don't waste any put the lid on to make it safe You can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, I was just trying to get myself sorted there. I think we can see everything now. All right, now, something that um, I try and do is I have a little brush. I have a couple of different size brushes that I keep by to get rid of any stray bits of embossing powder that, oh, just see what I just did. I wasn't being careful and I just, that's okay. We can fix that. See, I just smudged part of the design. And what I'll do is just quickly come back in and do this tiny bit. There we go. That's better. Thankfully, that's an easy thing to fix. All right. Happy with that. Move my brushes out of the way. And I've pretty much got all the little specks off there. All right, so then I bring my embossing folder in. And it's just easier. I can hold it, but it's actually usually easier and safer to put something on it. doesn't matter what it is. In this case, I'm using the end of my brush. And I'm just going to turn my machine on, my, my heat tool which is what this is. If you're wondering, um, you can get heat tools in craft shops, but we do sell them. Um, Stampin' Up! have uh, heat, their heat tool, which in Australia is $50. Um, I love it because it's got a good protective cover on the end. Um, if you are one of those people still trying to use a toaster for embossing, um, hands up if you've ever done that, <laughs> um, then my suggestion is that you get yourself a heat tool. You'll love it. You'll be so glad you did. But I know I've had a few people who... Who, um, are still using toasters even after all this time this is a good investment because I use mine a lot just takes a little minute for the powder to start to cook and go it turns very white and goes shiny There's some great tips here about how to set how to set the um, the powder. Sorry, how to set the pastels so they don't rub off. All right, so I'm just making sure that's now you should be able to see it's shiny in the middle of the flower there. I've missed a couple of other bits, so I'm just going to quickly go over those. Once it's all shiny, if you hold it in the light, it's easier to see. That's better. And then we'll do this bit. Now, once you've started, once it's started to heat up the first bit, the rest of it goes much quicker. It just takes a few seconds for the heat tool to get hot. Sometimes people say to me, can you use a hairdryer? No, because it's too powerful and it will blow all your powder away. Can you use a paint stripper? Not advised because it's a lot hotter than this is and you may cause all kinds of problems. Burn your paper, burn your fingers. I wouldn't advise it. We're nearly there. Now 
I'm just going back to double check I've got everything. Looking good. Give me a second. I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Okay. So it's now heated but it cools almost immediately and you can actually it's it's cool to the touch you can i mean it feels warm but it's cool enough it's not hot anymore okay now i like it just like that i mean the white on the black doesn't that look stunning and you could either do a greeting in the middle and emboss that or you could lift it up on um you know stamp a greeting on a on a label or something and pop that in the middle and it would just look fabulous but of course we're going to use something else um i'm wondering what color we should do I'm thinking, I wonder if this green is too bright for our leaves. It might be. Maybe I won't. I'm not going to touch it at the moment. I'm thinking first of doing the flowers. What color shall we do them? We can do Coastal Cabana. We could do the Gorgeous Grape. We could do Mango Melody or Daffodil Delight or Poppy Parade. I think maybe not the Poppy. I don't know. What do you guys think? Which one do you like? Oh, thank you. Everyone's blessing me. I'm very blessed tonight. I like that the Stampin' Up! Heat tool has two heat settings. Yep, I use the lower setting for more delicate papers and vellum is a good example. Yep. Mango says Subu and she's the first, so that's where we're going to start. I'm going to come down here and I'm thinking maybe I'll... So I'm going to actually colour with the corner because you can be a bit more precise with the corner. Okay, and I'm just going to add some colour. Now the nice thing about embossing on black is it gives us nice... Um, lines to work with. Now I'm not being particularly careful with my pastels. I'm being quite rough actually. Don't worry about being exact. Okay, now you can either there's another petal up here you can either leave it with that kind of rough look or you can do what of course I'm going to do and start to blend it in. Now it even looks good just like that, right? You can use your fingers to blend this which actually looks quite nice. And it's very easy because we've always got those, pardon the pun, <laughs> we've always got those on hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> that's me laughing at my own jokes. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so that's doing it just with your fingers. You could bring in your blender pen, okay, and start doing it with that. Do each flower a different color? I think so too, Donna. I agree. All right, so we can we can soften the edges or we can blend it all in with a blender pen. But that's looking rather nice. <laughs> I'm glad I am. Yeah, grown. I know, Cherie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was about to say it and I went, oh, I can't say that. Yeah, I think I just will. <laughs> what is the next color? It was a dad joke. I know, right? Terrible pun. <laughs> oh, I'm still laughing at myself. Sorry. All right, let's see what other colors people chose. So Subu was first with mango. Donna's next with grape. All right, let's go grape. So I'm going to use the corner. And now the grape won't show up as much against the black, being a darker colour, but it will still show purple. So I'm just, once again, going to be quite rough. So you'll notice it goes over the white lines a little. Um, that's okay. Just ignore that for now. We'll fix that later. And I'm just trying to add a reasonable amount of powder pigment in in each place so I can blend it later. All right, can we see that? Does that look okay? I think it does. And also the embossing helps contain so you don't go outside the lines because you can feel the ridges, so you're less likely to go outside those lines. All right, like that. Uh, next one is Cherie with Coastal. Okay. I'm reading them as they appear on my page. All right. Now, Jean, I have a question for you. <laughs> um, you'll think this is a very strange question. In your picture, you're wearing a hat. Okay. Do you wear a hat often? Is this a look that you often sport or is this something you did for fun? Because it seems to suit you. And I just wondered if a hat is your normal thing to wear. All 
My colouring always makes people go quiet, so I'm apologising if I do. So you can see these colours work really, really well on the black. Don't they look good? Looking really, really nice. Okay. Now, what colour will go the other end? Will we pull in one of these three colours to this corner or go with something totally different? The next one that was down was Nairi with Daffodil Delight. You can scrape some chalk off and then colour with that. Yes, you certainly can. Um, hmm. We don't have an orange as such. We do have Mango Melody because this was um, this was the which is on its way. It's it's a it's a bit more yellowy, but it's on its way to orange. It's not it's not there though. It's a little bit more yellow than this one. All right, let me. I'm just gonna go into the corner here. And I'm thinking I won't colour the leaves. I'm actually thinking I'll just leave them. I think they kind of look nice, just the outline. All right. I'm going to pick it up and give it a... Get rid of the excess powder. All right. Liking that. It looks good. Um, now... You've got a couple of choices. I'm wondering, should I blend them or should I leave it with more of the black bits? Maybe I will blend them. Use a blender pen just to get close to the edges, but it's a softer edge doing it with the blender pen. Now, something I didn't think to bring in earlier was a damp cloth or a, a cloth, just generally. But I could probably, I could probably just use a tissue. Because what I want to do, what I want to do is um, give it a little bit of a polish up so that it some of the colour comes off the embossing. And even doing this with my with my blender pen looks rather nice. Just softening it up a little bit, evening it out so we haven't got big black patches. Although if you like the black black patches, you could leave those. finish coloring it here now you can also use watercolor pencils on black you get some um, leave the leaves yeah okay that's what I thought too the hat a lot you're known as the hat lady there you go <laughs> ah right yeah it is poppy I could have gone with the poppy but I didn't yeah all right let me just grab a cloth. I've got a, I have got a cloth here. Let me see if I can give this a little bit of a polish up. Now you're not going to completely bring out the um, the lines of the embossing, but they are going to come up a little a little bit more and shine up a little bit more. And you can also see there's a little bit of the black coming through as well. See, it does come off here on the cloth. So I'm just trying to go over some of the bigger bigger lines. If you didn't want to do this, you would like the colour to be a bit more solid, you can do that. But I like the way they almost look a little bit translucent. So here you go. Is this kind of what you had in mind, Elizabeth, or you didn't really know what to expect? <laughs> Now, we now need to decide where I'm thinking about putting a greeting in the middle. That's looking really nice, isn't it? Can you sort of see that there is sort of the black coming through a little bit? So they look like they're a bit translucent, which is kind of nice. And you can see your embossing still quite clearly through that. Isn't that nice? Um, I could heat emboss the sentiment. I was thinking about putting it actually on a vellum, a vellum piece actually but I'm just wondering I'm thinking about this 
I, some of you would know I'm a big lover of vellum. Um, really, really love it. And I was deciding too whether I go with a banner or a circle. I have actually, just thinking about it, I think I have a black circle. Oh, I have one. That's too small. That's way too small. I need something bigger. I'm just noticing I had a couple of vellum circles on my... See, I could use this, even though it's... That probably is too big, but you can still see the flowers through it, which is kind of nice. Um, the next size down might be about right. What do you guys think? So these are the stylish. Uh, I you can see I've not my my pit. I've actually got them all over the table behind me because I've been using them. I love these. These are fantastic. They have two rows of stitching on the inside and the outside. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six circles, five squares, and four banners. So I'm using another one at the moment, but I love them. I just think they're fantastic. So let me let me move this out of the way. We'll put these back so I don't lose them. So what I was saying before, if anyone in is in Australia and you're listening, um, and you're not already part of my VIP group do join the VIP group because um, because that is where I'm going to give away a pack of soft pastels over the next couple of days. So you want to be part of that? Definitely. Okay, let me move that out of the way. All right, yeah, I think this size is the size to use. And maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just use my um, cut and emboss machine, which means I'll need to, Need to zoom out a little bit so it's not too hard for you guys to see. Here we go. So base platform down first, which is number one. So you can see the number one up here. If you haven't used a cut and emboss machine, they are just fantastic and it opens up so many possibilities with your crafting. really does. It's fantastic. Oh, I have also, no, I'm not going to use this, but I have a nice gold, a gold rectangle left over from something else. No, I don't think that's right. So I'm thinking maybe this size. This is actually two pieces, not just one. When I'm cutting, quite often I'll cut double. I'll cut, especially with a simple shape like a circle or a square, because by cutting double, I've got pieces left over for something else. That's just a little time saving tip, and then I keep those in. Um, I know, I don't know if Ellen's watching tonight, but Ellen has uh, what she calls a use it up box, which I like the sound of that, but, it, you know, I just have a little bag of leftover bits and pieces. And sometimes if I don't know what I want to do or what I want to make, I will just, um, just open up that little bag of stuff. Bring this back in now. Um, little bag of stuff because um, it inspires me. I just look at pieces in there and go, oh, I know what I can do with that. Right, so I've just got to peel this part, which is easier than said than done. I would use the little pokey tool. <laughs> I have got another pokey tool. I think I've got more than one. I would use that though. You know the one with the um the thin the brush the brush the dye brush on the end on the end of the takey pick tool. Um, except the kids have been using the takey pick tool brush to to brush the cats because the cats like it apparently. Um, never mind, I might need it in my craft room, but that's what they've been doing. All right, I've got another pokey tool here. So Emma trying to give Crumpet a, I can't even get this part. Here it goes. I felt it go there. There we go. Ta-da. All right. Um, yeah, so I, I saw her today using it, using it on Crumpet. I'm like, that's not what it's meant to be used for. <laughs> Um, if you're in Australia, Heather, you're very welcome to join the VIP group. Um, actually, easiest way for me to tell you is I can post the, I can post it. Um, the the group is called Linda Dolkey's Private Stampin' V 
VIP group, I believe. If you go looking for that, it's 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 available to find. But let me just put the link up for you. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. Yeah, Linda Dolky's private Stampin' VIP group is the name of the group. And here you go. If you want, I'll put the link in the chat for you. Okay. Um, here we go. You're in Australia. There you go, Heather. I've just posted it as a comment and you can just copy and paste it and you'll appear. And there's just a couple of membership questions to answer that you're in Australia and um, and away we go from there. All right. So I'm thinking we've got some nice greetings here. This one's a good one because it's going to fit or you are wonderful in every way is nice or wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. Which one will we have? Happiness or wonderful? Which one do you think? Oh, it wouldn't let me post that. I don't know why it wouldn't let me post that. That's interesting. Try again. It might not let me post a link. Oh, yeah, it's letting me do it now. So there you go. don't know what happened. Um, first, happiness, says Megan, and you were the first. And then Elizabeth and Judy all said happiness. So that's definitely the right choice. Um, right, I'll just pop it here on a block. Right, and we could pick, I think, any of the colours that are in here or I could emboss it. Hmm, I don't know. What do you, th what do you think? It's up twice. The first time it told me it didn't post, so it is posting now? Oh, well. <laughs> yep, and if you're in Australia, you're allowed in the group, Jenny. Absolutely, I do have other demonstrators in there. I'm I'm aware. I'm not going to police, you know, whether or not people. I mean, so long as you're in Australia, it makes it easy for me to post giveaways and things like that. So, so there we go. All right. So we're going to go happiness, and I'm deciding. You think emboss this block? This is H H block, and then there's another one. The two long skinny ones are H. Actually, H and I. I is the big one. See how big that is you see it and then h is the smaller one which is good for most greetings and then there's a little tiny small one um, for like word, one word um, like i use this one for the word friend and that's the little tiny guy and he's g so g h and i are the long thin ones good for sentiments there you go we've done a bit of bit of playing around with blocks tonight too haven't we Okay, so we're saying we're going to emboss it. And then what do I want to do, though? Do I want to, hmm, okay. I'm having a thought. I could do it in white and then we could put some colour behind it, which would look really nice. We could pick either of these colours and add some colour behind. Let's try that. Shall we do that? Um, or I could emboss in a different colour, but I'm thinking I'm going to try with the white. So once again, I'm going to use my Versamark and we'll ink that up. pop it so it's kind of in the middle as much in the middle as I can make it it says wishing you all the happiness you can imagine which is very nice and I'm going to dump it in here and dump powder on top grab the corner that's rather nice isn't it all right, and let's bring our tool in again. Um, if you've never done embossing, I strongly recommend it. It is one of my favourite techniques to do, and, you you know, you will find so many wonderful things you can do with embossing, emboss resist, embossing on all sorts of different surfaces. It's fantastic. And it's very, very elegant. And don't – I saw someone post the Modern in Sunny saying they were a bit scared of the heat tool, weren't sure about it. Don't be scared. It is fantastic. Um, I've had a couple of people ask me recently to do some basics in embossing, so I may do that. Um, even though I know we do it here a lot, um, I may do a proper how-to basics in embossing, that kind of thing, as a as a standalone video. Post that to YouTube. All right, so something I haven't talked about tonight yet, 
and I need to because it's kind of important. We've only got a couple of weeks left. We're, can you believe we're halfway through May already? I know, crazy, right? Um, we have a joining special this month. For anyone who hasn't heard this, all right, before I tell you that, um, so this is the side where I embossed. Okay, I'm actually going to turn it over and I'm going to use my, I'm thinking the dark colour may go well, so I'm going to try using my um, gorgeous grape on the back. And I think use either a sponge dauber or even your fingers and we'll spread that around. You can see it's blending out quite nicely. And then we've got a bit of colour showing through. So a little bit like the stained glass technique, but we've got, I'm just going to make it a bit darker. And blend again. go that's better the good thing about vellum is because it's got that you know translucent quality it's quite it's quite fun to work with and can give you a really nice effect all right so you'll lose a little bit of it putting on the black but that's okay we still got a hint of that color now interesting how do we put it on so okay a couple of things we could cut another piece like a, a piece of one of these other colors and put that underneath and then we could you know do all kinds of things with this but in the meantime let's see if this will work we have some black mini dimensionals and i'm going to pop a couple of these behind here and let's see how this works it should work well because our background is black so Hang on, that one's stuck to my fingers. All right, so if I turn that over, you can't see them at all on the black. Look at that, or very little. And I'm just trying to keep it behind the, the, the writing. So the ends will not be stuck down, the edges won't be stuck down, but that shouldn't matter, it will still hold. Now, if you hold it up, you can see them. See them there? But when you put it against the black, you can't. Just like that. And I'm not going to worry with ribbon or anything. You could add some iridescent rhinestones. That would be nice. Um, let's put this on a... Actually, I'm just going to make sure I've got all the powder off. I don't want to get that all over my white paper. my bone folder just to flatten down the edge and this is going to go on here I should turn that over and there you go we've done a card a little bit different tonight but we've used the pastels for it just to that's right you can't afford everything haha <laughs> that works all right, so what I started to tell you about a moment ago was the joining special, and I do need to mention it. You know, I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't let you guys get the most value that you possibly can from Stampin' Up, okay? And the way to do that, if you're purchasing regularly, the way to do that and get the most value is to purchase the starter kit. So people think the starter kit means it's a specific kit, but it isn't, okay? It's just, it's just you spend the money and sign on to say, yep, I'm going to be a demonstrator. Do you have to demonstrate? No, actually you don't but you may find you enjoy it. You might like to. Um, it is a great way to earn some extra money. And I've been doing this now for nearly 16 years. Okay, so for me, it's become a job and a career. I think of it as my job. Um, so obviously I have a different take on it to someone who's just doing it for a hobby or someone who's doing it um, because they want to get their own products at a discount. Okay, all of those things are valid. Lots of different types of people do this. Um, the cool thing is at the moment, they're giving away on top of the kit. So if you spend $169, you'll get to pick $235 worth of product. However, on top of that at the moment, they're giving away an extra $116.50 worth of in-color, new in-color stuff. Okay, so that's all the new in-color 
um, ink pads, all the new, uh, a pack of assorted new colour cardstock in A4. They're doing the new in colour DSP 6x6 six six size and they're also doing um, the new in colour grid paper. Okay, so all those things are included on top of everything else when you spend the buy the kit for $169. Now, if you think that's a really good deal, it is. It's like over $350 worth of stuff for only $169. If you think that's good and you'd like to get a continuing discount as long as you remain a demonstrator, please send me a message and I'll get you any information you need. Okay, so it is, yep. It, absolutely. Some people think, well, I'm not, I have to disagree with you there, Judy, because I don't think you're ever too old for anything. <laughs> and we have people of all ages doing this, seriously. But um, having said that, I fully appreciate that not everyone wants to do it as a job. I get that. Okay. But some people like to, and the ones that don't are very happy to be shopping and getting that discount. So please send me a message if you'd like more information. I'm happy to shoot that to you and um, and get the information to you. Um, so that you can you can experience that for yourself because I don't know where I would be without this this business. I absolutely love it. I love the company. I love the way they look after their beautiful community of crafters and I'm happy to be in that community. So I know we've got quite a few demonstrators um, listening tonight. Quite a few of you already are demonstrators and I know that you guys would say you're really glad you did it. Um, it has been for most people it's something they really enjoy and um, it's like a hobby in itself so there you go <laughs> you do it for a hobby Sandra there you go yep lots of people do okay oh no problems at all Subu I think this card's really nice I think I might add some What happened? Okay, I don't know if anyone can see me. I don't know. <laughs> um, here's my card. Don't know what happened. We just lost power. So our internet went down, which means this is as far as I'm going to.